Welcome to part two of Mastering Filmora. Here we're gonna be talking keyframing and how to customize those keyboard shortcuts so you can be as efficient and optimized as possible while editing videos. So first let's talk about keyframing here and I have this clip pulled up that we are going to uh, use and it's a very static shot of this uh, guy, you know, lighting up a pan, getting ready to cook something. And keyframing can really be used with any effect, but I'm just going to use it in a uh, transformation uh, sort of way. So if we double click our clip and go under the animation tab, you can see we have presets. We also have the ability to customize. And I'm going to show you how to do presets in each one. They're very similar. So for example, if I add a fade in and I kind of drag and drop it right at the beginning there, and maybe even a fade out by where I want to start. And I zoom in to my timeline here, give a better look. You can see that adds these two little dots and then an arrow. These little dots are your keyframes, essentially different points in which uh, movement or transitions happen. So we can see at this keyframe, the opacity is zero and then we fade in to 100% by this keyframe, and we can adjust these keyframes to make those actions happen slower. So by spreading these out, it will make this fade in last for longer, or we can make it really short. And so it fades in from black super quick. And of course, the same goes for the exit, right? We can have the fade out last a little bit longer, or we can have it be super short. And I can do custom keyframes. So if I go into customize here, maybe I want to mess with my scaling here. So I can start at the beginning. We start at 100% and maybe by a couple seconds in, I want to be zoomed in a little bit more. So I'm going to zoom in and you can see it automatically adds a keyframe right here. But you'll notice I made a mistake and this is something that happens all the time and I want to point it out. Because I didn't set a keyframe in the beginning at 100%, if I scroll around this clip, you can see that the scaling never actually changes because I just have one keyframe. So in order to have changes, you need to have at least two keyframes. So I need to go back to my first frame here and go back to 100%. It's about that. So now it gives us a starting point and now as the clip plays, you can see it zooms in. And you can keep going if I only want that zoom in to happen for a couple seconds. And then I want it to go back out a little bit. I can add another keyframe there. And, and you can just go crazy with it. I mean, you can make it move however you want. And so if I play this back, you can see it zooms in and zooms out a bit. Zooms way further out than it should. <laughs> And after the fact, you can adjust any of these keyframes as well. So I think you guys get the idea. Keyframes are just these little points in which the animations that you add onto your clips uh, happen and you can adjust them, add more, add less, and make it look however you want it. Now something that's often looked but definitely is one of the advanced things you want to look at anytime you jump into an editor is customizing your keyboard shortcuts. If I go up to Filmora here near the preferences, right below it, you will see keyboard shortcuts. And this will open up this window, which basically shows you all the different keyboard shortcuts throughout the entire program. And the cool thing is that these are all editable if you want to make them something different. So for example, if I go to cut and uh, for a normal cut, it's Command X, but maybe you want to replace it with what is normally Trim, which is Command B. So I could just click right here and on my keyboard hit Command B. It puts it in there. If I were to hit OK, it's going to tell me that this shortcut's already taken. Uh, do I want to swap them? And I could say yes or no. Of course, I don't actually want to, so I'm going to change this back to Command X. And we can see that that is put back there and keyboard shortcuts are really valuable to learn because they can speed up your workflow that much faster. In most of this training, I just use the on-screen symbols and icons to make it easy for you guys to understand. 
But if editing is something you really want to get good at, then I definitely recommend spending some time in here and learning, if not customizing keyboard shortcuts to work for you. Um, because I, I literally calculated it one time and using keyboard shortcuts and editing keyboards, I actually was able to speed up my editing by over 30%. Once you've made all the changes and checked out what you want to check out, simply just hit OK and you'll be good to go. And by the way, if you ever mess up your keyboard shortcuts, of course you can always restore defaults as well as search for stuff. So if you know you want to search for trim, you can go in here and see what the keyboard is. If I want to search split, which is probably the most common, then we can see that it is command B or quick split C. All right, and for our final tip here, we're actually going to leave our current project and come back to the window when we first open Filmora. Uh, and instead of creating a new project here, we are going to create a auto B sync. And so double clicking this is going to immediately open up a new project and we can see the auto bit and we can see the auto beat sync window pop up. And what we can do first is import some media. So I'm going to import some of the same sample footage uh, that we showed and we're going to do the kitchen scene that we've been shown off. Just import a handful of clips from that. I'm going to say open. We can see them all up here. And then your basic settings that you can choose from, how long do you want the entire thing to be and what do you want your background music to be. I'm just going to stick with this kind of preset one here. And then the B cut you can basically change the pacing. I want it to be a little fast, nothing too crazy. And for video effects, you can go in and add some stuff. You know, I kind of like a little bit of glow, uh, not too much else. Um, so I want to keep this all pretty standard. And then we're just going to hit analyze. It's going to do its thing again very quick, just like every other Filmora plugin. And we can see it kind of arranges our clips. Uh, in a way that it thinks will be visually interesting. So let's check it out and see how it looks. So I'm just going to hit play. All right, and so that looked pretty good. I actually do want to see what a little bit faster would look like. So I'm going to change this to fast. And then I'm also going to trash this first clip and this second one. Uh, I just felt like it was a little bit uh, too boring in the beginning, and I'm going to import some different ones to kind of add a little bit more motion. So you notice that even though once it generates, you don't have to deal with that. You can go in and change it. So I didn't love the glow. I'm not a fan of crazy uh, effects, you know, maybe a little bit of blur or something. Now I'm going to hit reanalyze and see what it does with this. All right, so now let's check this out. Ooh, that's cool. All right, so once we see a little preview of it uh, and we like the look of it, I can say export to timeline. And this is really neat because uh, it basically just does a ton of editing work for us. Um, but it still gives us the ability to go in and customize after the fact. A lot of auto beat things, uh, features like that would just export that video and you kind of just have to live with everything that it decided for you. But that basically just set up a project for you. It's kind of like sending it to a remote editor and then having them do an edit and then sending you the project file back so you can fine tune things the way you like. So everything in here is customizable just like you would any other video project. So I could go in here and, you know, I felt like this clip just lasted too long. And so I could shorten this a bunch going to set things up for myself. And so once you have this project file open, you can treat it again like any other project. I can go in and delete clips from here. I can move things around. I can go back to my media and I can say like, oh, I really want this moment in here. So I'm going to in and out. I'm lighting that on fire. I'm going to squeeze that right inside of here and kind of resize it. It's, it's literally like any other project that you would have created from scratch, but saves you a ton of time matching it straight to music. 
So that is auto B sync. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching.